Okay, we're going to look at another example. Here we have a fourth order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. And so just like the other ones that we've done like this, we're going to start by writing our characteristic polynomial. We're looking for four linearly independent solutions in order to build that general solution. Four, because we have a fourth order differential equation. So we just start by writing down our characteristic polynomial. And we want to find the zeros of that characteristic polynomial. So we'll set it equal to zero and solve for r. So factoring whatever, whatever algebra is appropriate here. This one factors pretty easily. Uh, it's quadratic in form. So factors into r squared, r squared, and plus 4, and plus 4. Uh, so each of these are a sum of squares. They don't factor more. But when I set each of these factors equal to 0, I'll have r squared plus 4 equals 0. I'll subtract 4 and square root both sides. We'll get r equals plus or minus 2i. So non-real zeros for the characteristic polynomial. But the other important thing about this example is that both of those have multiplicity 2. Those both occur twice because I have these two factors. So I'll get r equals plus or minus 2i from one of these factors, and then another set of r equals plus or minus 2i again. So remember, when you have zeros with multiplicity, in order to get those other linearly independent solutions, you can multiply by x powers of x, increasing powers of x, until you get enough for uh, corresponding to the multiplicity here. Uh, all right, so for the, let's focus first of all about the non-real zeros. So remember, when you have non-real zeros of the form a plus or minus bi, you're going to get lin two linearly independent solutions, each of the form y1 equals e to the ax cosine bx. Class, we went through the um, polar form of complex numbers and talked a little bit about that and understand how we can write complex numbers in that form. So we'll get one in that, in that form and then the other one e to the ax times sine of bx. All right, so here we have r equals plus or minus 2i. The real part is 0. So the a for these zeros here is 0 and the b is 2. So I'll have e to the 0x, which is just 1. So we'll get y1 is uh, e to the 0x. I don't need to write that. Cosine 2x. And y2 sine 2x, using these forms here. All right, but then because we have the multiplicity, multiplicity 2 on each of those, we can get our next set of linearly independent solutions by just multiplying each of these by x to the first. And again, if I had higher multiplicity, I could continue multiplying by x, a power of x, to get more. OK, so what we have here are four solutions. Again, easy to verify that something is a solution to a differential equation. You just take the appropriate derivatives and plug it in. You can verify that. Um, so I have four solutions. Pretty easy to verify that these are linearly independent, either by using the definition of linear independence or the Wronskian for, uh, for these functions. So I can show that these are all linearly independent. These are the four solutions that I will need to generate all solutions to this differential equation. Sometimes we call this set of four solutions here, the set of all the solutions you need to, in order to build the general solution as the solution, uh, or the set of fundamental solutions, fundamental set of solutions. We know from talking about the linear algebra part of what we did that this is also a basis for the solution space for this differential equation. And again, what we're probably really after is being able to write down a general solution. Often that's what it asks for in your homework, is a general solution to the differential equation. 
So you're just taking all linear combinations of these. Again, for your online homework, pay attention to the instructions. If it tells you something specific about what order to put the terms in, then follow those directions so it can count your answer correct. If you're just writing this down and it's not for online homework, then it doesn't really matter what order I put these in. C1 times one of them, plus C2 times another, and so on. I'm just gonna do them in the order I have here. All right, and if you have initial conditions, then you can maybe find a particular solution satisfying your initial conditions. But often this is what it's asking you for in your homework. Pay attention though in the homework, sometimes it'll ask for a fundamental set of solutions and so it's really asking for a list. Sometimes it's asking for a general solution. Uh, so just pay attention to what the instructions ask for so that you answer the question that's actually asked.